Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Kevin Taste. You're watching another Eastwood live stream. Um, anything can happen and it probably will. So thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching this after the fact. Uh, Eastwood has a motto, do the job right. And so today we're going to show you a bunch of stuff that is going to help you do the job right. All the items we're going to be talking about and showing you today are part of Eastwood's 2015 holiday gift guide. There's 200 items with savings up to 60% off. And we're offering free shipping on stuff uh, for over a $50 purchase, excluding heavy things like welders and giant pieces of steel and iron. So um, you can get the holiday gift guide. You can go online. There's a paper thing here. And there's amazing deals, amazing deals. And we will be offering some technical information today, uh, but it's mostly talking about great deals that you can get. And I'm going to mention some prices, but always check online and check in with, um, with the Eastwood online store or go to any one of our three uh, brick-and-mortar locations in Parma, Ohio, or uh, uh, Alsip, Illinois, or Eastwood headquarters in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And hopefully there's going to be more stores popping up, but you've got options to get the Eastwood stuff. Uh, I've been a partner with Eastwood since 1999, selling my Paintrucation instructional DVDs, and, uh, and I'm proud to be associated with the company because they care as much as I do about you guys learning. So we're going to walk around and talk about some stuff, and I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that's new coming on the scene. Um, and we've got Project Z Sled here. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well and how I use a lot of the Eastwood tools, equipment, and supplies on Project Z Sled. So, um, Let's talk about lighting. Here's some cool stuff. Very great deals. This is a battery operated. Oh, by the way, we're going to be taking questions on either anything that you're going to be seeing here or anything else that we've done. If you want to talk about hands-on cars, if you want to talk about some of the tech videos that we've got online, of which we have more than 1,000 tech videos online, call us up, ask us some questions. You don't have to ask about these tools and equipment. We want you to know how great the deals are, but it doesn't have to be about this. So I've got the Bluetooth in. Headquarters has got me uh, on speed dial. If anybody can ask or wants to ask questions live, just call in the number, you know how to do it. So this is a retractable light. Now lighting, if you're upside down under the hood, trying to troubleshoot problems like I've had to do in Zed Sled, uh, it's a new wiring system, sometimes your grounds aren't tight enough, sometimes you pop a fuse because you arc off on something. This guy is a really nice light, it's very bright, it doubles as a flashlight, and it's got, it's got two intensities. It's got a kind of a high-low, it's, uh, it's powered by three AAA batteries. The cool thing about it is that it's very compact. You can see how, um, you see how narrow it is. So you can get that in tight areas and you can clock it and you can, it, it ratchets. Anyway, it's a great tool. It can stand up on its own. It's versatile. My point is this, and it's right around 10 bucks. You can't beat that with a big stick. The other thing is this retractable light. Again, very bright, is a dual light or just doubles as the flashlight on the end and it's rechargeable. It's got a hook and it's got magnets so you can use it for, for a drop light underneath the hood of a car or in a tight spot. Again, it's, it's, uh, it gives you options. Lighting is so important. You gotta see what you're doing. And uh, these just give you the ability to do that. This one, you can charge it on your accessory port in your car, or you can plug it into the wall. The Mac Daddy, I've seen this one coming. I've been so excited about getting this light, is the under hood light. Come a little closer, Steve. Camera guy Steve's, <laughs> he's catching up. So this is a rechargeable light. Here's the cool thing. It's foldable. You can hang it up, or you can use it folded. It's got extensions on the end. It's not going to bruise my paint because it's a very soft coating on the extensions. And it fits on any hood. Here's the real cool thing. Look how bright that sucker is. So why is that important? Well, look at this. The tubes roll and now dive down in there. Look, look at that engine bay. I can see everything. 
If I'm in trouble on the side of the road and I need to get down in here and if I need to find, I can see all the plug wires, I can see the firewall, I can see some wires I don't have hidden, and I can see all the dust on this engine bay. So I can troubleshoot problems on the side of the road. If I'm jumping off a car, I can see my battery and I can see the other guy's battery too, just by clocking the lights. And the other thing is this, we're in a very well lit studio or workshop or whatever it is that I have here and I can open the hood and I can see everything under the hood very, very well. Now I can see it to detail it. So if you're at a car show, if you're at an indoor event and you really want to do a spit shine and polish on the car, there's another purpose for that guy. It is rechargeable. It's got one and a half hours life on a full charge on the high setting. On the low setting, it's got a three hour life constant on, um, on the high setting. I think that's, yeah, th uh, three hours on the low setting and um, a three hour recharge from a full discharge. So it's not gonna take you very long to get it back up to speed. Here's the cool thing. This is on sale and you'll, of course you wanna qualify this, but in the catalog that I got, this is, it's right at about 80 bucks. That's a really great value for a very versatile tool. So we're just gonna leave that guy on and light up the interior is Zed Sled. So, speaking of Zed Sled, if you've watched Hands On Cars, you know that we shot this car with all Eastwood products from the bare metal up. We welded the patch panels in with Eastwood welders and uh, we used some, some good friends and good partners like National Parts Depot and some other places that, that um, we got our sheet metal from and other restoration supplies from, but it's an Eastwood vehicle in every sense of the word and especially in the sense of the spray gun. This is a Concourse Pro two gun set. This is my gun. This is the gun that I shot this car with and I've cleaned it, it looks brand new. I'm gonna keep on using that gun. It's got really nice features, it's very comfortable, it sits in your hand nice, it's got very uh, easy adjustments on the controls and it's very versatile in the sense that I like to spray top coats with a 1.3 fluid tip. My base coat and clear coat on this car, as well as the sealer, if you watch the Hands On Cars show, I can't remember what episode it is, uh, but it's the one where we do the paint job. Uh, the, the sealer, base coat, and clear coat are all done with a 1.3 fluid tip. However, the 2K urethane primer is the 1.7, and the high build poly surfacers is the 2.0. I don't need three guns. With the Concourse Pro set, I've got a 2.0 fluid tip, I've got a 1.7 fluid tip, and it comes loaded with a 1.3 in the gun. So you could say I've got three guns, but I don't. I have four guns because it also comes with the minigun with a 1.0 fluid tip for smaller tight areas, for doing detail shots, for doing suspension components. When you don't have to load up the full size gun, the minigun is a really nice value. Uh, it's a really nice accessory to have and it just gives you more options. That's what tools do. Tools give us the options to do the job right. And um, yes, they cost money, but they save time. And sometimes they can save money and save time. So you gotta have them anyways. You can't spray a car without a spray gun. And the Concourse Pro two gun set is a very, very nice value. Comes with a tool kit and cleaning kit. But I always recommend that you go online and go to Eastwood and get their deluxe cleaning kit, which has the different brushes and different little orifices that will really get into, inside the, you know, the, the fluid tips and the air horns and things like that uh, if you need to clean those internal crevices. Uh, I do want to say, um, when you buy a new spray gun, whether it's this gun or anybody else's gun, you never want to pull it out of the box, load it with paint, and shoot your car. You always want to do a very thorough cleaning process, and we have this video online for you to watch. So regardless of the spray gun that you get, um, make sure that you do a thorough job cleaning the gun before, um, be before you... These guns are packed. They're, they're, sometimes they sit in a warehouse for a very long time. Uh, just the machining process. Sometimes there can be degree, or debris in the uh, fluid passages or the air passages. So make sure you clean it out really well. Concourse Pro two gun set, great value. Look online also. I don't know if it's in the sale catalog, catalog or not. Spray gun stands, little accessories, all the little things that that uh, that, that are going to help you out. So whether the, the the pieces that you need that aren't in the sale catalog. Or, or whether they are, uh, anything over 50 bucks, you get free shipping. So you can save on shipping by adding accessories on to the big job or the big ticket deals that you're gonna get. 
if you're gonna do body work, you're gonna need a hammer and dolly set. Uh, I've got a large selection of hammers and dollies because when I coach people through this stuff, my biggest advice with hammers and dollies, body working tools, is that you wanna match the dolly and the hammer to the contour of the sheet metal that you're working, because you're trying to recreate. Typically, you're not trying to move around or change or customize. Those are metal fab. That's metal fabrication, slip rolls, English wheels, planishing hammers, things like that. That's when you're, when you're shaping. This is when you're restoring metal. So you wanna match the, the tools to the piece that you're trying to recreate the shape of. And this Fairmount dolly set covers all the bases. There's three hammers, three dollies. They're the most popular dollies with the right shapes that you're going to need to get inside. A lot of, you know, probably 90% of your repairs you can handle with this set. Yes, there's bigger sets. There's a lot more hammers. There's some crazy, I was out at SEMA show with Eastwood. There's some crazy new hammers. There's single-faced hammers and smaller, shorter handled hammers. There's all kinds of really great accessories and tools that you can get with the Fairmount tool line. But um, those have to be built over top of the basic set. Now this set has got the pick hammer, a low crown hammer with the pick end. We've got a flat style end. And again, it's flatter than this hammer, so you've got another option. It's a low crown, but it's not completely flat. And then this one with a completely flat anvil and a shrinking anvil right here on, on the other side of this hammer. It's a great set. They're very nice tools. So I don't want to call it a starter set, but it could be the first set that you can buy with very nice equipment that you can build off. Here's the other thing. I've got a separate roll around tool cart. As a matter of fact, that's it right back there that has my hammers, my dollies. I've got a drawer with the different drifts in it. And that is my body work station. If you don't have that, if you haven't upgraded to that, well, this thing's got a case. And you can take this thing to your project. When you're done, now you've just created space on your bench top. So the carrying case is very robust. It's very strong. And it's going to last the lifetime of the tool and get you a permanent storage solution that is portable. So it's a nice value. Um, jumping ship. And I'm just racing down this uh, laundry list of cool stuff. Um, this time of year, it's November, and I'm putting my mower away. And the next time I'm gonna think about my lawn mower is probably gonna be the first week of April. And I'm probably gonna forget to put, um, <laughs> to, put uh, to disconnect the, the positive lead in the, in, the, uh, in the battery. And I don't know, I, my point is, I'm not, a, I'm, the, the lawnmower is smarter than I am, and this tool is much smarter than all of us put together. This is a battery maintainer. It's low voltage, it's got a microprocessor to sense voltage, so when it comes up to a full charge, it backs off and it will maintain the perfect 12 volt charge. This is nothing new. Everybody's heard of a battery maintainer before. Everybody's heard of the battery. The, the, there's a bunch of different brands out there, and Eastwood's got uh, very versatile brands as well, as well as smart chargers for AGM batteries as well. But this battery maintainer has got a four-step charging system. You can, um, you can hardwire it in if you've got an ATV or uh, a, a battery mounted on the tongue box of your trailer like I do for my car hauler. This allows you to, to plug that sucker in just with a simple plug and not have to use the alligator clamps. Having said that, alligator clamps, there's nothing wrong with them. The battery tender I can throw that on my mower the whole winter. I don't have to think about it. When I fire that sucker up, when I light that mower off in the spring, I know it's gonna run. So this is another great value, and I've got the price somewhere down here. Um, no, I don't, I don't, but it's, it's ridiculous. Check it out online. It's a very, very great deal. My feeble memory tells me that it's somewhere around 20 bucks, so don't bust me on that, but what a great value. What, is a, what does a battery cost for your mower in the spring? You're, you're booking 100 bucks just about for some of them. So anyway, um, think about that sucker. Think about it, get it, hook it up, forget about it until the spring. Uh, I've had custom cars that, um, that kind of needed a little bit of help. If they sit for six or eight months, if you've got a traditional battery, sometimes the, the battery is just 
just flat out lose their charge. There's a, a electrolytic draw sometimes, even if the circuits are perfect. So having a battery tender, battery tender or a conditioner maintainer on your battery just in storage over the winter, if you've got a fair weather vehicle, an off-road truck or something like that, just think about it. It's a great idea, great thing to have. So here's another thing. Let's talk about something very simple, something that we all take for granted, which is an air hose. This is a good air hose. It's 3 8 it's 50 feet. I don't have the, the fat 3 8 uh, fittings on it because it's just a shop hose. And it's got the brass couplers on it. So I've already got an air hose. Why would I need this? It's because of this. This will still hold air. It'll still, it doesn't leak. I can plug it in. But every time I touch this sucker, if it's not coiled up or something on a wall or on a wall hanger, I've got a bird nest. And I'm messing around with this. I'm trying not to say bad words because we're live. I'm messing around with this. I've got to get it unraveled. If it's pressurized with air, it's even harder to unravel. And it's taken up floor space. So I'm going to run over it with a creeper, launch myself onto the floor, which I have done, and it's not very fun at all. So we're going to have this guy. It's a 50-foot air hose, 3 8 inside diameter. It's wall mount or it's floor mount, and they even include concrete anchors to anchor this sucker down onto the floor. Um, it's, it, it's kind of a no-brainer. I, I, it's, it's weird to even have to talk about this, but what a great... What a great space saver. You can mount this on a, on a beam on the wall. You've got your air hose. You can mount it from the ceiling and come down. It's, it's, a, it's a ratcheting system. It'll, it'll, it'll come back without, it's got a stop for the hose. It's just a great idea and it's a great time and space saver. And it'll really help you keep your shop clean. If you're working in a one bay garage, uh, like a lot of us do, this guy right here, well, just, it'll just make your world just a little bit easier from the level of a shop. And it's under, hundred, it's under $100. So it's a great value as well. Eastwood invented home powder coating. Look it up. Eastwood is the innovator of the hot coat system of home powder coating. So there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, that I really respect about that. Uh, we sell only virgin powders. There's a crazy array of colors that you can get, different textures, clear coats, candies, uh, textures, flats, gloss, uh, high heat, up to 650 degrees in a powder coat, and a very affordable dual voltage powder coating gun. Uh, I've heard rumors that there's a professional series gun coming down the pike. I can't confirm that, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see something like that coming down pretty soon. But the dual voltage gun is, it's the traditional style hot coat gun. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a hopper load. It, it's very, very simple. You hook the ground up to the piece, 110 volts, an air supply up to the base of the gun, just like a pneumatic spray gun. You've got your trigger to energize, creates the electrolytic process, draws the powder in, you let it go, unclip, and then you put it in, the, in your heat source. Powder coating is a beautiful way to, to coat parts. Your only limitation with powder is, will the piece withstand 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and will it draw an electric charge? There's ways to get around electric charge with, with different primers and things like that. But, you know, it, you're basically limited to temperature and, one more thing, the size of your heat source. You know, so if you're wanting to do a transmission bell housing, you can't do it in a toaster oven. So uh, short of an axle housing, you can, you can do a lot of different parts. So along with your dual voltage powder, uh, powder coating system, which again is under 100 bucks for a very versatile system. Um, and by the way, don't forget the uh, powder coaters uh, beginning or powder coating beginner's guide. Uh, it's a book written by Joe Richardson, who is he's forgotten more than I will ever learn about so many things. Joe is a he's a, I'm going to call him a genius with a capital G, and uh, and he's got a great book and a great guide that is going to answer all the questions that you've got. So don't forget to ask for this when you're ordering your dual voltage powder coating system. So once you've got your powder applied to the part, 
in however method that you choose, you gotta have a heat source. Now the toaster oven works fine, but sometimes it's not big enough. So you need something a little bit bigger. So Eastwood has come up with their own powder coating oven. Okay, you could probably make toast in it, but look at it this way. <laughs> You don't have to go and grab the thing from, from the countertop and, uh, and, and you know, get the crumbs out of it and then put your part in, cook the powder, and then get it back in the kitchen before your sweetheart finds out. Now you've got a dedicated powder coating oven. It's got an on-off function. It's got a timer up to 60 minutes, which is very important. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's very important to have a timer because you're timing powder to 20 minute increments for getting things up to charge, a 20 minute flow out period, and then a cure cycle after, um, after the, the powder has flowed out. So the timer built in is a godsend. We've got a, a, a temperature range up to 450 degrees. Some powders, the translucents and the clears, they require 350 to 380 degrees, they don't need as much heat. So you can dial with precision right here without having to, to do the point and shoot guessing game or with the high heat powders or the solid colors or textures, sometimes you, you need to, to shock it a little bit, get it up to temperature a little bit faster. If it's a cast part, and then you could back off to your typical 400 degrees, which is where powder is typically um, cured. Here's the other cool thing. Yes, you always wanna have gloves. Here's the neatest thing and it's such a simple device. This guy will allow you to take the racks off of your stand, put them into the oven, and put them, take them back out of the oven so the part can cool without ever, ever having to touch it, without burning your hands, without being uh, drawn to, to grab these racks, and uh, it's, it's just a neat device. Now, if this was hot, I would be yelling and screaming and talking in different languages right now, but I wanted to show you the part. And this has nothing to do with the powder coat oven, which is a great value. Again, it's just um, powder oven. Yeah, it's, it's just under 90 bucks. 90 bucks, what a great investment. And they, these are investments, these are tools. Tools allow you to do the job far, uh, far faster and, and, uh, and, and accurately and without mistakes. I, I wanted to show you this powder. This is a chrome radiator hose. I've used a translucent blue over the radiator hose. Now, if I had painted chrome over top of this, or I'm sorry, if I had painted a candy, uh, like a urethane clear coat that's tinted over top of this, you'd be seeing, it would be like a bomb going off. You'd be seeing uh, paint splinter off everywhere. I coated this years ago to do this demo. It's a cool candy look over top of chrome, virtually no prep, and the powder doesn't care. The powder has enough flexibility that you can just keep manipulating it, which is great for hood hinge springs, coil springs, things like that. Um, it's, a, it's a very, you know, the, the question comes up, why would I powder over paint? Well, this is why, because your paint is not gonna stick like that, and it's very, very strong. So powder is a great option. Now here's a homemade option. <laughs> this is something you can't buy in the Eastwood catalog. This is Franken Cooker, and this is a Rick Harris original pinstripe on here. Um, for something, if you've got a bigger part than your powder coat oven, you can get a little creative at home. This is, <clears throat> basically you can see what we've done. Cut the top out of one oven, and cut the bottom out of the other, and put them together. Uh, gotta thank Jeff Gallagher for his, uh, his ingenuity when helping me get this done. This is a neat, neat way to powder coat. I can coat big parts in here, I can preheat and I can cook them. This uses an extraordinary amount of energy to heat the part up and let's face it, it's probably not the best seal on this part. So in, in the spirit of conserving energy or not using as much electricity, it's another great reason to use an oven if you don't need a source that big. If you need something that big, well, uh, creativity is your only option. So think about that when you're trying to suggest gently to your significant other, what kind of a cool holiday gift? And let's face it, it's almost Thanksgiving and we're coming up on Christmas and um, it's, it's a neat time to, to share tools with each other and, and tell people how much we care about each other by gifting. So um, yes, you can save money, but you can also show your love to somebody with the help of Eastwood. How fun is that? All right.
I have magnetic tool trays. I've used magnetic tool trays for years and years and years. One of the biggest complaints that I have over the magnetic tool trays is the magnets themselves. Um, they have a tendency to scratch the surface. Well, this is actually a magnetic tool tray set, and I want to bring this up close to, uh, to the camera. The magnets are coated, and they're soft. So providing I keep them clean and keep them wiped off, the edge of the magnet itself is never going to scratch my toolbox. So now I don't scratch up my expensive toolbox and, and I can move these guys around pretty much wherever I want to move them. This is a really interesting shelf because I can load it up with my favorite Eastwood products and it's got different ports so I can put an entire set of screwdrivers there. It gives me storage options. Just like the roll around tool cart for all my hammer and dolly supplies, this gives me storage options that not only can I utilize my metal surfaces, which are all over the place in my shop, uh, the lift posts, jacks, the side of the car, what the heck, you know, the, the cabinets I've got here, they're all metal doors. So now I can bring my work to me. I can bring my supplies closer to my, um, my project. And what that does is save me steps. It saves me steps across the shop and it saves me steps back putting my tools away and it's just a time saver. There's a bunch of different options here. This is one of the coolest ones. For your towel roll, it's two individuals with a little spindle here, so you could even put them upright, or it becomes a double towel roll like that, and okay, so it's not rocket science. <laughs> It's a set of magnetic racks, but how cool is it? You know, it's neat. They look good. They're a powder coated uh, substrate. They're going to last forever and they're going to give you options for tool storage that is portable. It's just kind of fun. And the price of this is crazy ridiculous as well. Um, here is something that uh, I, I'm known for these. This is my series of Paintrication instructional videos. I've got paint your own car, fiberglass repair, body panel replacement, metal prep and rust repair, body shop basics, and color sanding and buffing. And they're durable too. But um, packed in here is about 30 years of my personal accumulated knowledge in auto body restoration and, and basic automotive repair. And uh, th these were, were a way for me to pass on some of the skills that, that I've picked up from people way smarter than me over my tenure and my, my, um, my travel through this journey of, of this car thing. And, and uh, I'm proud to have stuffed a bunch of knowledge in here. You can get these through Eastwood. We've got more coming out. The latest one is fiberglass repair. We walk you through a bunch of different projects. These are on sale as well. And you can get them through eastwood.com uh, as well as as um, as to um, we're we're trying to figure out a way to to do a, a digital delivery to where you can have it on your smartphone. We're very close with that, so so please keep that in mind. Um, but uh, there's a great sale on these paint education instructional videos, to which I'm very proud of. So so we'll we'll help you out. It's it's knowledge in a box. Um, so. <laughs> It, it can help you through a lot of the procedures. A lot of the tech videos that, that we have on the Eastwood YouTube channel are um, tiny condensed versions of the information that's in the page education videos. So check out some of the videos we've got on Eastwood too, and they're free. The DVDs, well, they're not free, but some of them are two hours, two and a half hours in length, and, and they contain an awful lot of really great information that I'm very proud to pass on to you. So think about those as a holiday gift guide, one or the entire set, and again, um, a couple of these videos in your past your $50 threshold and you get free shipping on everything else. So the paint education DVDs, all these stands, great stuff, big time fun. If you're serious, if you're a, cookies are done, if you're a welder and you, <laughs> and you want to build stuff, I've got the Eastwood tools. I've got the MiG-135 and the MiG-175, and for sheet metal and light-duty stuff, um, they're great, even though they'll weld up to, up to um, gosh, I think it's 5 eighths, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, they're, they're heavy-duty welders, but they've got the very fine controls. The 135 is my favorite for light sheet metal just because your, your uh, weld pool is very small. But, but um, 
and your heat affected zone is is very very tunable and very controllable although you know I'd lean on the 175 a lot it, they're great machines and the MiG 250 is no less of a great machine the biggest thing that I like the, the thing that I like the most about all of the Eastwood welders is you're not hearing clicks the controls are infinite. Your wire speed and your voltage controls are infinite controls, so you can really dial in the settings on this welder. I have yet to outsmart the suggested settings. So you can pick your substrate, you can pick the thickness of the substrate, and the different wire size that you've got and different conditions, you can dial in your recipe really quickly and um, and get your settings up to speed. Okay, I'm getting a, I'm getting a call in. Hey, maybe we got some questions. Got my little Captain Kirk Bluetooth in. Okay, have you got me, Matt? Okay, all right. All right, so we're connected with the Eastwood headquarters, um, but I want to keep talking about the, the MiG-250. This is a great welder. It is very heavy duty. A, uh, a welder that I've got, that I've had for a long time, is in a big blue box. And um, it's, a, it's a good machine. And I'm not knocking anybody else's machines. And um, it's a really good machine. And it's been with me a long time. But I need a trailer to pull it down the road, almost. It's very heavy. And it was very expensive. It was probably three times as expensive as this MiG-250. The duty cycle is the same. And I don't have infinite controls on my blue machine. And you know some of them do. Mine's an older one. It's got the notches. I reach for this now. The MiG-250, uh, uh, what he used to say is it costs half as much as comparable machines and weighs half as much as well. It's got a 60% duty cycle. Why is that important? Well, the duty cycle is, is how long you can use it for, uh, for 10 seconds. Uh, out of a t I'm sorry, out of a 10 minute cycle, it can run full out continuously for six minutes nonstop without the need to rest. So six minutes out of that 10, full on constant welding, this machine is not gonna melt down. You're not gonna have voltage fluctuation. It doesn't need to cool down and rest. By rest, it can, the capacitors inside can get oversaturated and you can actually suffer your weld quality by using the machine too hard, by, having a, a, by abusing your duty cycle. 60%, that means six minutes out of 10, you can go full on constant, full out welding with this machine without any fluctuation in, 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 uh, in the voltage without suffering, without compromising your weld. That's a heavy duty hoss. Now I've got oxy, I'm sorry, I've got um, argon acetylene here, um, argon CO2, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a 7525 argon CO2 um, with, with the, uh, with this, the tank doesn't come with it is what I'm saying. Go to your local welding supply, but the, uh, the gauges do, a lot of other accessories do. Here's another thing. This is part of the system here. We call this a dog bone, but basically it's, a, it's an inverter cable um, or a transfer cable. You get your, your 230 volt plug that goes into a 110 volt uh, outlet. How is this possible? There is an inverter in the machine that is voltage sensing. It will pick up on how much voltage and, and amperage rather is coming into the machine and it will adjust the settings accordingly. So you've got options even if you don't have 230 volt uh, or the wrong plug configuration, you can still go to work. You can still weld because it's got the, uh, the, the power capability to do that. Um, here's another reason to, to use this welder. This thing, it's 66 pounds. It's lightweight enough to where you can put it in the back of a pickup truck. Um, of course you don't have power in a pickup truck, but you can run this guy off a generator since you can go with 120 volt power, right? So you can go from a generator to this welder. Well, you don't want to carry around your, your big tank. You don't want to carry around your fuel tank. I don't either. You can use flux core wire with this machine. Run it off a generator. Do a field fix. If you're, if you're an off-road racing team, you can do a field fix with this thing. Or if you've got to go rescue somebody, or if you're working on a farm, this is a great machine. It's very portable, very durable, because you can run off a generator. You can run with flux core wire. You know, flux core is not as precise as far as the cleanliness of it, uh, or as far as the shielding capability of it, but you can get the job done with flux core. So this gives you more options. The fact that it's a third the weight of my other machine makes me want to reach for this if I've got to run out and help a buddy out that's got a busted axle um, flange or a, or a tab or something like that on an off-road fix. So great machine. Um, 
again, uh, the, the spool gun does not come with it. The spool gun has saved my butt. Spool gun allows you to do aluminum welding in the same fashion as you do MIG welding. The shielding gas comes around the wire feed and it's just the same as MIG welding. So if you can't TIG, you can still aluminum weld. You, you change the voltage around in the machine, change out your shielding gas because you've got to have 100% argon and then you can go to work with a spool gun. Come back over here, let me show you, or tell you, can't show you because it's hidden now, but how a spool gun saved my butt on Z sled here. I have never told anybody this story publicly, but some of the Eastwood guys know because I was bragging about the spool gun. Um, the intake manifold is from Holly Performance Products. It's a three piece, it's called a mid-ram intake manifold. It's got a lower, a middle, and the upper hat here. So it's modular, it can be changed around. Um, I was changing, I was mocking up the engine a couple of different times and I dropped the lower manifold. I dropped it. It hit on the corner, busted off the corner and, and I, I was, it, it ruined my day. It was terrible. Um, thankfully, I was able to take a look at it the next day because I had to go home and consume adult beverages and think about what I had done and what I was going to do, uh, order a new intake manifold or something, but I came back. I looked at it and I said, well, heck, there's a spool gun sitting right there under my, under my MIG. So um, I v the, the crack out and, or the, uh, sorry, the split out. I made sure I had a good positive fit. I actually put a piece of duct tape on the top and I went to work with my spool gun and I fixed my lower intake manifold in probably, I don't know, 45 minutes. And I can TIG weld, but I'm not like Matt Murray. I'm not a very good TIG welder. I'm a student of TIG welding. Matt's, I've seen him stack dimes. He's very good. Not my forte. MIG welding is what I typically um, is what I typically reach for. But the fact that I had that aluminum spool gun sitting underneath my MIG welder allowed me to fix the intake manifold on Z sled, even though I, I'm not an aluminum TIG welder. And it was so simple that it really, really kind of saved my butt. So on that note, um, even though the spool gun does not come with your MIG 250, it is a great accessory to have. And it doesn't just have to be the 250. The 135 and the 175 MIG welders, you can use a spool gun with those as well, if I'm not mistaken. So um, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of it. Um, if you get a chance to see Zed Sled, a lot of this stuff went into creating this vehicle. And uh, I'm, I'm so proud to, to know that, that I can pass this information on to you. I've got a, a $160 spray gun that's given us a show quality paint job. And you know I'm, I'm unafraid to say, yeah, I use that gun. You can get the same results with that very same gun. So I, Matt, have we got anybody with any questions? Okay. Okay, we do have a, we do have a question. Um, which welder would I use for 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 an all round? What's the most versatile welder that I could reach for for an all round restoration? If you want, if you're going to weld chassis or you're going to do really heavy duty stuff, if you've got to build a trailer or if you're gonna do uh, like a mezzanine in your shop, the 250, great machine. Um, you can also dial down and do very fine, it'll take a, a 24,000 MIG wire as well. So you can do very detailed work with the MIG 250. Um, personally, I really like my MIG 175. I love the 250 and I can't wait to dive into it more and figure out uh, exactly how versatile and capable it is because you, know, you just never know uh, when you're gonna be welding half inch plate steel, which that thing is very capable of getting penetration on a half inch plate. Um, so, but for the quick answer for me is the MIG-175 is, is kind of my go-to machine. So, um, so I hope that answers your question. And, and again, what a great time to buy this stuff. Uh, the holiday gift guide has over 200 items and they're all on sale. Uh, we, we have the Eastwood TV tool specials all the time. So keep on, open up those emails. Even though we give you a lot of them, eastwoodtv.com, Kevin's Corner, Hands on Cars, blah, blah, blah. We're always hitting you with emails, but man, there's a very good reason to open those emails because we're throwing sales at you as, as much as we want you to come back and see what's new on the site. And, uh, and as always, we want to thank you for, for watching the videos that we put up online and, 
and understanding that we care as much about you having a good experience with these tools as we care about you buying from us at Eastwood. Um, the R&D team is full of great ideas. There's all kinds of great stuff coming down the pike uh, at all times. So keep on watching. Keep on watching Hands on Cars. This thing is, um, uh, well, it's ready to rock. I've got to put a wheel alignment on it. And then Zed Sled goes racing. And we're going to see what it does. It's a neat car. It sounds really healthy. It's, it's an awesome rig. Um, <laughs> we had uh, DBR do a quick tune on it. So we've got it calibrated. Um, it's... It does what it's supposed to do, and I can't wait to get out and drive it, and we're going to show you exactly what it does. And we've got a cool comparison. It is a Z28, so I'm going to leave the rest up to your imagination. So we've got a cool comparison between this and, and, uh, and kind of what, uh, what the late model uh, world is delivering up for Z28 power. So I'm not going to go into it any more than that, but just to say keep on watching. Thank you guys so much for watching all the videos, all the Hands on Cars shows, and for, for being a part of the Eastwood world. Uh, our slogan is do the job right, and we want to help you do the job right. So for now, I'm Kevin Tates. You're watching live from Columbia, Tennessee, and uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we will see you on the flip side, see you on the net. Uh, keep on rocking, man. Just because it's winter doesn't mean you can't work. We got, we'll sell you a space heater too. So thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.